It's hard to trust things that we don't understand, and climate models are one of those things for most of us. They require complicated mathematical models that have to be run on computers. Scientists use these computer-based models because it would be impossible to build a small laboratory version of the Earth's climate system. You can think of it like a model airplane. You don't have the money, space, time, or ability to build a full-scale plane, so you build a smaller version like this by putting all of the little pieces together and tweaking it until it looks like a real plane. Of course, climate models are a bit more complicated than this, but a similar idea. You put all of the necessary pieces of information in, and then you compare the outcome of your model to what is really happening. The models that go into predicting climate change are difficult for many of us to understand. What goes into them, and how are they used to predict global climate change? Well, um, the models are complex even for wor people working with them to understand, um, but in general there is no one climate model. Uh, there is a whole um, hierarchy of models, starting from very simple models that only predict the global average air temperature on the Earth. Um, that is only one equation and you can solve it on a piece of paper with a pen. The range goes up to very complex models that solve many millions of equations on supercomputers and include all the components of the climate system such as the atmosphere, the oceans, ice and biological systems. How certain are we about these climate model predictions? There are things that we are very certain about and there are other things that we are very uncertain about. For example, um, the global average temperature changes can be predicted very well. This global average is not distributed evenly, but it is distributed unevenly, with uh, certain areas experiencing less climate change, for example over the oceans, and certain areas experiencing more climate change, um, for example at high latitudes in the polar regions, in the mountains, and over land. And uh, so these things are relatively certain. Climate models like this one are calibrated by comparing atmospheric conditions from the past with conditions today. By extracting ancient air trapped in Antarctic ice shelves, researchers can determine what the Earth's atmosphere was like starting hundreds of thousands of years ago. From this information, they make predictions based on trends in carbon dioxide and global temperature averages. Oregon State University professor Ed Brook is one of these researchers. I study the history of Earth's climate, and specifically what we do in my laboratory is study the history of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane and how they influence climate over geologic time. So what we do uh, is actually uh, extract ancient air from ice from Antarctica and Greenland and use uh, these ancient air samples to study the past atmosphere. And to do that we have to travel to places like the top of the Antarctic ice cap or the top of the Greenland ice cap where groups of investigators get together and uh, use these very specialized large drilling rigs that can drill all the way through, many miles through these ice sheets and collect a, a long cylinder of ice that we then bring back to our laboratories. 